Hi, this is Ken McCarthy, and we're celebrating the 20th anniversary of the System Seminar. And one of the ways I'm doing that is by reading the book, The System Club Letters, 57 Big Ideas to Transform Your Business and Your Life. These were letters I wrote to members of my System Club, and the System Club is made up of graduates of the original System Seminar, as well as people that joined us after we stopped doing the public seminars and I don't do public trainings anymore I pretty much limit them to people that are in my my group um, why I got tired of people coming to my seminars taking stuff repackaging it putting their names their own name on it uh, and then going into competition with me so everything we do now is pretty much behind closed doors so I'm inviting you uh, first of all to get the system club letters book uh, you should at least look into it uh, you'd be amazed at the number of top grade marketers who consider this one of the best business books ever not exaggerating and I didn't say it they did um, you also if you're a serious business person might consider joining the system club so let's dive in uh, this type this chapter is called I learned it at the movies Long ago, when I was a partner in a startup film post-production business that was on the verge of going broke. I didn't read that right. Let me, re let me start again. And again, this is free, so you're not getting any editing. Long ago, I was, and it was, it's even longer ago now. Long ago, I was partner in a startup film post-production company that was on the verge of going broke. And this was 1988, so that was a long time ago. Our company specialized in audio post-production. That's the creating, acquiring, and mixing the music, sound effects, and voiceovers to create movie soundtracks. Somebody's got to do that work. My partner was a technical genius, and I'm going to be kind of mean here, um, but he was a marketing moron. Not uncommon, by the way. Very often, people that do things really, really well just don't know how to market them. Um, in fact, you could even be a good marketer and not know how to market your marketing. It's just, just the way it is. He spent all his time building an incredibly innovative digital audio editing system, but didn't do anything to market himself at all. Things were so bad that when I signed on, he was just a few weeks from closing the doors. And as a sidebar, uh, I love impossible, so-called impossible situations. Um, I didn't know a thing about movie making at the time, but I knew there was a market for what he offered and that we could reach it. I wish I could say I was a marketing genius, but all I did was get a list of TV commercial producers and send them a postcard. It was enough to generate $17,000 in high margin business in less than 20 days, and we were off to the races. And in 1988, $17,000, you know, it was okay. It was okay. The average person was making about $30,000 a year then. So to make that in 20 days, not bad. Um, within five years, the company had an, had an Academy Award winning film as a client, and it moved from a low rent fire trap office into a Manhattan brownstone. Ogilvy Schwartz and Citizen Kane. One of the things I've noticed over the years is the impact the movie business has had on many of our greatest marketing minds. For example, David Ogilvy's first job as a young man was working for the famous pollster George Gallup, providing audio, uh, audience, analysis, audience analysis services to Hollywood. It was while working for Gallup that he discovered that, on average, moviegoers need to hear a film mentioned seven times before they seriously consider seeing it. That's such a big piece of information there. I'll just assume that you grasp the significance of it. Lesson, expose your prospects to your offer more times and you'll make more money. Seems obvious, but we've got a lot of people out there that think one brilliant ad is going to win it, and it's not going to. It might. It will, it will with a certain small hyper-responsive hyper section of your market, but it, it won't win the day, ultimately. Repeated exposures wins the day. And by the way, that now is done through something called retargeting, which I did not invent, but I did anticipate in this book. Um, so, next lesson. 
um, no, more on the same lesson. Ex expose your prospects to your offer more times and you'll make more money. Okay, here we go. Uh, the great copywriter, Eugene Schwartz, used to advise his copywriting students to see every current movie with a box office of $100 million or more. Why? For a movie to sell that many seats, it has to powerfully resonate with the public and generate strong word of mouth. Lesson. Gene learned a lot from the formula the producers of Lethal, the Lethal Weapons series used. Five minutes of dialogue, a fist fight. Five minutes of dialogue, a car chase. Five minutes of dialogue, an explosion. In other words, punctuate your sales letters with fireworks on a regular basis. A great cure for what David Ogilvy called the worst sin in advertising, being dull. Big one. Hope you got it. William, Randerson, William Randolph Hearst, the subject of Orson Welles' movie Citizen Kane, was a massively successful print publisher and pioneering movie producer. He actually invented the, uh, the idea of the cliffhanger. Believe it or not, somebody had to invent that uh, in the context of movie making, and he's the one that invented it. Okay, though he was a highly unscrupulous man, that would be William Randolph Hearst, he bragged about helping start the Spanish-American War to improve the circulation of his newspaper. Things never change. Um, he was a phenomenal promoter. One of Hearst's biggest discoveries was the, quote, cliffhanger. Oh, yeah, it's here. Deliberately ending a movie at a high point of unresolved tension to lure moviegoers back to the theater the following week. By the way, you can you can do this on page turns, right? If you're really crafty, this take this is where the craft comes in. Your pitch on a multi uh, letter on a multi-page sales letter will come to a cliffhanger at the end of each page, compelling the reader to turn the page and keep reading. You can do the same thing with video if you're crafty. What's the lesson here? Uh, you make more money selling a series than from being a one-hit wonder. So that was something that William Randolph first figured out. He didn't just invent the cliffhanger because he needed to invent something cool. He realized it was a lot more profitable to have um, a film and break it up into lots of episodes and sell a ticket for each episode than it was to put out some huge long extravaganza of a film but the only way you could make that work is if you calculated a really good cliffhanger probably everybody has seen law and order uh, that television series and certainly if you've ever spent time in a motel or hotel room uh, needing to kill time or, or just relax uh, this, it seems to be on every hotel uh, if you haven't try to try to see an episode or two, they don't. They start. This is brilliant, and this is by the way. This is why they were successful. They start every program with a cliffhanger. There's this sort of thirty seconds of normality that suddenly gets shattered by absolute bizarreness, and you want to know what the hell just happened. And then of course they go to a commercial, and you're waiting for the story to unfold. So, movie promotion is a high-stakes game, right? It's not like uh, putting up a website or s even sending a direct mail piece. You're, you're spending tens of millions of dollars, sometimes hundreds. Um, even though they make a lot of garbage and a lot of the people in that industry are less than you know, impressive human beings, they do know a thing or two. And uh, therefore, as I say here in this chapter, take advantage of the blood, sweat, and tears the industry pours into promoting into its in its product. In, here we go, starting again. Take advantage of the blood, sweat, and tears the industry pours into promoting its products. See a popular movie or two every now and then, and take notes. This chapter really merits a lot of study. I I don't believe in the 500-page or 1,000-page book. <laughs> I like to compress it all into a two or three pages and yeah I could spell things out in technicolor detail uh, and that would help me that would have helped me bulk up the book I guess 
Uh, but what I'd rather do is just give you the clue. Uh, there's more than enough information in this chapter for you to work on all day, all week, all month, all year, and it will make a massive difference in your business. And this is just one chapter in the System Club Letters, which I, I uh, for your own sake, I've already sold many thousands of them. I don't need to sell another one. It just pains me that there are people who think they're marketers uh, that don't have this book and haven't read it yet. Uh, that's why I'm reading it. And we're reading it to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the system seminar. So we'll see you next time.